Welcome to Voltis of this dungeon gate 2 guide video. This dungeon does not have a pattern difference between normal mode and hard mode. Gate 2 is not weak against any element. You just run Light of Salvation car set. The type is Beast type. So you will do more damage if you have additional damage from the card books. Battle items. Before you go in, you can obtain cube looking items by interacting on where the cubes are. These cubes are gate 2 exclusive battle items. And all 4 players must take it. Each player can throw the cubes up to 5 times in a run. I will explain what this item is for later. For the rest of the items, Destruction Bombs and the Supporter takes Marching Flag while other 3 takes Atrophin. Raid System During the raid, one random player will get 2 ice mark above his character. The boss will always aggro the pattern to the player who has this mark. This mark transfers to other players over the time. There is an important system in this gate. Over the time, this boss gets image of buff that looks like his head, hand, feet, body, etc. If he collects 5 different buff, then he wipes the raid, so it's like Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh game. The way to reset the buff that he has is by throwing the cube items on him. Let's look at the example here. At the start of the raid, once you throw the cube on the boss, then after around 5 seconds, if the boss is on the cube, it binds the boss and the party have to go for a stagger check. You have to succeed the stagger because if you fail, then he will free the bind and his patterns become harder. Also, during the stagger check, there's no damage reduction, and he does the stagger check periodically when he's binded, so it gives you more time to free DPS. The last reason is, unless it's the start of the raid or he's staggered, the boss is scripted to dodge the cube. When this happens, other people can back up by throwing more cubes on where he backstepped, but this is like wasting more cubes, so you want to succeed the stagger. After the first stagger, then he will request second stagger check after doing around 3 patterns. Just succeed the stagger and do free DPS. After the second stagger, then he will request third stagger check after doing another 3 patterns. The third stagger check is not doable, so just do the free DPS during the check and dodge the breath that he does after getting freed from the bind. Normally if the boss's HP is over 100 bar by the time he frees from the third stagger, he will do a pattern that is able to be countered. He has two kinds of patterns. 1. He curls his tail. 2. He heads back and charges two times. All the players have to come to his front and succeed the counter. He does the counter pattern for every 1 minute and a half. If you succeed the counter, then do the stagger check and the two players throw two cubes right away. If two cubes land on the boss, then it leads you to the destruction check. This is when you throw the destruction bombs. If his armor gets destroyed, then his buff stacks that wipes the raid when it reaches 5 will reset. The boss cannot dodge the cube when you throw it after he gets staggered. That's why you do it like this. By the way, you just have to throw one cube when he's under the bind. Because the cube that binded him previously is counted. But since the process I showed is destroying him after he got freed, you have to throw two cubes. So in summary, if I show you the sequence again, at the start of the raid, one person throws the cube, and you succeed the first stagger, then the second stagger, and you fail the third stagger, and succeed a counter into the stagger, then immediately throw the two cubes from two players, and then throw destruction bombs to reset his wiping buff. Some of you might ask why don't you just destroy him right away from the start instead of doing this process. The reason is because 1. There's no reason to destroy him when he has low stacks of wiping buff. It's a waste of cubes. And 2. You want him to be binded as long as possible to do more free DPS. Hope that you understood. But let's say that your party DPS is too strong. So by the time the third stagger fails, his HP is below 100. The problem is, he does a major gimmick at 95 HP bar. If you fail to destroy his armor before the 95 major gimmick happens, then he may not do the counter pattern, so this will increase the difficulty of landing the cubes. To avoid this situation, Strong DPS party normally throws one more cube right after the second stagger succeeds. Since the boss is still binded from the first cube, you just have to throw one more to see the destruction check. By doing this, 
you can reset your boss's buff stats safely before you see the 95 major gimmick. So how do you know if your party DPS is strong? If the boss's HP is like 110 by the time the second stagger succeeds, then just throw another cube and see the destruction check. Whether your party DPS is strong or not, if you succeed the destruction, then the boss will have a new buff that lasts for 40 seconds. The boss cannot be binded from the cube when he has this buff. So just DPS him until it disappears, and when it does, then you just have to repeat throwing the cubes. But he will dodge the cube because as I said, it's scripted, unless it's the beginning of the raid or he's staggered. One other player just have to back up by throwing the cube to where the boss backstepped, and you will see the stagger check. Until the boss's HP reaches 30, you just have to repeat this tactic to make sure that his wiping buff stacks doesn't reach 5. Another raid system that's important to know is, the boss periodically releases 4 red orbs on each side. Each player have to take each of them. This red orb gives massive buff to the players which reduces the cooldown of the skills by a lot, and also increases the regeneration of the resources. This buff lasts for 15 seconds. But there is a downside of this buff. While you have this buff, whenever you get hit by any patterns from the boss, then you will lose your HP down to 10%. You will throw up the blood everywhere in the field. After your HP reaches 10%, then start picking up the blood to heal yourself back. If you try to take the blood or take potion before your HP reaches 10%, then you will keep on losing your HP until it reaches 10%, so be aware. You might think, if the downside is that bad, then isn't it better not taking it? The problem is, if you don't take these red orbs, then they will try to reach the boss. And if it reaches the boss, then it will heal the boss which will result in lack of DPS. So you have to take the orb and learn the patterns. So those were the important two raid systems. Now let me go over to the major gimmicks. Around the 95 HP, the boss jumps to the center and starts to rotate. The player who was close to the center will get two eyes above him. At the same time, three clones will be generated around him. Other three players except for the two eyes player should go to where the each clones are. Two clones require a counter. And the other one will apply all die above the player close to that clone. With that being said, let me set this straight what is going on. The person with two red eyes will get the aggro of the boss. The boss turns to where the two eyes player is and shoots breath if the player is in his cone range. The two eyes player should aggro the breath to where there's no players. The two players who got counter clones should succeed a counter. If even one counter fails, then that's a raid wipe. After succeeding the counter, those two players have to go to the other clone where the all die player is. The player who has the all die have to spin around the clone so that he's not in the clone's cone range. If he gets spotted by the clone, then that's also a raid wipe. You can also see the red orbs on the field. The two players who succeeded the counter should grab the orb and kill the all die clone in time. It's okay for other players beside the all die player to get spotted from that clone. By the way, the person who has the all die should never try to DPS the clone because the clone rotates really fast as you can see. Since only two players are able to DPS the clone, you want the supporter to have two eyes on the start of the gimmick. Supporters can give buff to other two players after dodging the breath from the boss. Even if the supporter didn't get the two eyes, it's still doable to kill the clone. If you kill the clone, then the boss in the center gets staggered, and that's the end of the whole gimmick. Around 30 HP, the boss charges to the edge of the map and climbs the tower. By the time this happens, the boss should not have 5 stacks of wiping buff. All of you guys have to stay in the center and dodge the AoE attack. Then the boss will land on a random side of the edge and locks the battle item. After he lands, you have to move to the opposite side to dodge another AoE attack. Then the view will change and he will start breathing around. Wait until he finishes the breath and then all the players have to head to where the boss is and stagger in time. The problem is, there are a lot of red orbs moving toward. If you get hit by any of these orbs, then you will freeze with massive damage and you will most likely die by getting hit by the next orbs. If there are cleanse classes, then they can cleanse this freeze. So basically, you have to reach the boss and succeed the stagger in time by dodging all the orbs. That's why using marching flag before the item gets docked is really helpful since it makes the party reach the boss faster. 
If you succeed the stagger, then there will be another AoE attack around them. Dodge them. From this point, phase 2 starts with the outer field on fire. Players have to throw their cubes in the center of the map as soon as the battle item gets unlocked. The boss will charge to the player who has two eyes and then charge back. That player have to aggro control the boss so that the boss can pass through where the cubes are. If it's done correctly, then the boss will get binded on the way of charging back. If he got caught by two cubes, then the destruction check will happen. Just destroy his armor and you're good to go. If he got caught by only one cube, then the stagger check will happen. After you succeed the stagger, the player who didn't use the cube should throw the cube right away to connect to the destruction check. If he didn't get catched by the cube, then he will breathe around the field and then jump to the player who has the two eyes. If there are players who haven't thrown the cubes, then before he jumps, they should throw it to the center and the person who has the aggro should stay on the center and dodge when he jumps. By doing this, you can bind the boss as well. If you don't bind him, then he will keep on repeating the two times of charge, fire breath, and jump. You cannot DPS the boss at all while he's doing this rotation since he will be on the edge of the map where the fire is surrounded. So you must succeed a bind. Even if you fail, keep on throwing at the timings that I mentioned since he repeats the patterns. If you fail on binding him because of lacking cubes, then you have to restart the raid. If you succeed the destruction, then he will not do the annoying patterns anymore and he will fight you guys in the field. During phase 2, his patterns are a lot more easier to dodge, but his attack is way much higher than phase 1. Squishy classes can be one or two shotted from any patterns, so you must learn his patterns. If you bring his HP down to zero, then that's the end of the entire raid. So normal patterns are really important to know. Phase 1 because of red or blue debuff and phase 2 because it hits hard. With that being said, let's go over to the important normal patterns. Grab. The boss reaches his neck to the front. If a player got hit, he gets grabbed receiving massive damage that can one-shot him. Don't be on his front. Tail slam. The boss slams the back with his tail. Don't be on his back. Tail swipe. The boss swipes the tail by 180 degree. Go far away or stay on his head side. Flame AoE attack. The boss breathes on the ground which generates AoE attacks on where the players are. Just move around. Pound. The boss pounds the ground generating cross attacks. Flamethrower. The boss breathes on the front side. Stay on the back. Pound two times and backslash. The boss pounds the front two times and slashes the back. Stay on the side. Crow. The boss crawls to the front doing AoE attacks. Jump and back sweep. The boss jumps and sweeps the back. Then he does AoE attack on where the players are. Swipe two times and AoE. The boss swipes the front two times and does AoE attack. Following patterns are lethal patterns that he does when he's not binded. You have to especially watch out for these patterns right after you succeed the destruction since he can't be binded for 40 seconds as I said before. Jump and AoE. The boss jumps to the center and does AoE attacks. Jump and hand wave. The boss jumps to the center and waves his hands generating AoE attacks. This attack chases the players. If you get hit by it, then it does massive damage and you will most likely die. So just move around the field until it's done. Rock Festival. The boss soars high doing AoE attacks that does massive damage. Look at the telegraph and dodge. Rock Festival version 2. The boss jumps to the center and roots his tail to the ground that generates AoE attacks. 
These attacks do massive damage. Look at the telegraph and dodge. Rock Festival version 3. The boss grabs the near players and pound them on the ground which generates Stonehenge AoE attack. Don't be on the front when he's not binded. Well guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and hit the sub if you liked it. Then see you guys on the next video. Stay Giga Chad.